Good afternoon, everyone. 4.30, so uh, I got the luck that I'm at the end of the day, but I'll try to deliver as good as possible. Uh, my name is Maarten Molenaar. I'm from Raamark Netherlands, uh, bank in the Netherlands, and I'll talk about gamification, of course. Um, first, to introduce myself. Um, it's a nice quote from Plato. Plato says, you can discover more about a person in an hour of play than in years of conversation. Well, unfortunately, we don't have the luck that I can play with all of you for an hour, so we have to make two. So this is me as a player. I, um, I love to play a dwarf. Uh, I don't know, it's just maybe the, the fact that they're very small and I'm very tall. Um, I like playing uh, a, a healer or a support role. Um, and um, I'm sort of, in games, I'm sort of an achiever or a free spirit. I don't need to win at all. I don't need to be the first as long as I can see everything and I can explore a bit. So this says something about me. Um, of course, I'm more than just a player. Um, I'm Maarten Molenaar. I'm the manager of the gamification hub in uh, Rabobank, which I will talk about, of course, today. And Rabobank is a big uh, bank in the Netherlands. We've got about 10 million customers. Um, we've got members since we are a corporation and uh, 45,000 employees. And we operate in 48 different countries. Um, and as a good thing to start is how do I define gamification? Because there is a lot of definitions, a lot of opinions. In my opinion, gamification is about applying game design thinking to a non-game context, which is not a, not a very new definition. And I think it's very uh, special if you want to achieve higher level of user engagement, change behavior, or solve complex situations. And in my talk, I will deliver about um, how do we introduce and implement gamification at Rabobank? How did I become uh, the manager of the gamification hub? And what is the gamification hub? Um, I will show you three different showcases on where we have implemented gamification and their results. And I will conclude with my vision on gamification within banking. Um, well, gamification at Rabobank. How did we gamify the Rabobank? Um, here's a little roadmap. It started out in 2011. Uh, we did some small pilots and projects. We, had some, uh, we did some, some experiments with gamifying our, uh, our website. And it didn't really work very well. I found out that if you want to do gamification, it's not just uh, using someone else's methods. You really have to learn as an organization how can you apply this. Um, and um, for that, we, we, we really needed a business case, of course, because I can't just come up to my manager and say, all right, I want to work with gamification. He wants to know why and what does it earn it. This this is the usual question you get. So, at that point, we already had some small pilots going, and these pilots were all operating on their own in their own organizational silo. As you can imagine, with almost 50,000 employees, you have different spots, not knowing of each other what they're doing. So I thought, well, what if I can connect all these different um, projects and all the different initiatives, and make sure that these lessons learned are being uh, shared with each other and that we create one big learning organization and I told my manager I said all right my w years of salary will be worth the lessons learned that we uh, that I can provide with connecting all these different projects and that was just a start I said I don't need extra budget all I make sure is that all these different projects are evolving themselves on uh, in, in learning about gamification and they can really benefit from it so then we started with the gamification hub. And what is the gamification hub? It's an internal virtual network where employees share and co-create their ideas and their projects in gamification. And they do it within the context of their work or outside the context of their work. And at this point, it's a very active network within Rabobank. And that's our instrument to learn and evolve in gamification. So what do we do? Of course, you have the, the usual inspiring and, and, and uh, presentations and explaining people what gamification is about. Um, secondly, I uh, make sure that we learn from projects within our organization, by, um, but also learn from uh, projects and uh, initiatives without the within the gamification community, like here on this G-Summit or all these, all these other initiatives. And, um, I advise um, projects on design issues. Um, if we can do it ourselves, I find the right suppliers so that our uh, project managers know how to implement gamification. Um, and the strategy I follow is sort of follows the, the Gardner hype cycle. We all know this picture. This picture did a lot with the whole gamification industry. And it says, well, gamification at this point is at the top of its hype, of its hype cycle. 
is the holy grail for everything. It solves every problem there is in the world. But at some point, we get in a trough of disillusionment. And people are not so sure anymore if it can help or if, can really, if you can really benefit from gamification. So what we as an organization try to do is, at this point, try to experiment as much as possible. So while everyone is enthusiastic about gamification, I make sure that they start a project, start a pilot, try for themselves. Um, so we can gather as much data and experience about gamification as we can. And at that point when people are less enthusiastic and they don't know exactly what to do anymore with gamification, that's a good point to think about, all right, how are we going, really going to integrate gamification in our core business? So we're not at that point now. We're still at the, at the, uh, at the high point, but that's a really good uh, next step. And of course, after that, you start implementing it and in the end, benefit from it. So, um, I have a three-phase approach which I followed and I want to share with you because I think it maybe can help you if you want to um, uh, implement gamification at your own organization or understand what the necessary steps are. First, I started out that we could learn ourselves. So, I, uh, as I said before, I connected these projects, make sure that they share their lessons learned. Uh, we did a lot of research. Remember, I didn't have any budget, so what I did, I hired an army of interns and they just did all these kind of research in, in, in the context of their own studies. And they gathered a lot of data and a lot of knowledge for us. Um, of course, the, the, the usual communication, newsletters, promotions, creating an internal uh, social network really helped. And the most important thing is know your organization. Mm -hmm. Know which part of your organization are important and what problems do they have. So know about these problems because then you can see if you can connect their problems with your gamification solutions. Second step was to teach. Um, it, of course, you can't do it all by yourself. So what I did, I uh, started out with workshops. And these workshops um, weren't uh, aimed to really make gamification designers out of my colleagues, but to make sure that they understand the concept of gamification and they could connect gamification with things in the organization by themselves. Remember that someone who is confident about his knowledge is more willingly to share it. So what I have now is I have over 100 small gamification ambassadors in my organization who are seeking their own ways on how can they use gamification. And it really, that seeding model really works out well. Uh, last week I was asked for a project to, uh, to advise on and the person who asked me had been in my workshop for over a year ago. And at that point a, a little seed was planted there and now she realized, oh right, maybe we can use it and let's start um, to see if we can, uh, we can work together on that. Um, second thing is that you have to find different ways to uh, implement gamification. Of course here you see the, the big services like the points and badges and, and the, the platforms, but as has been said in other talks before, gamification solutions are small and big in their way. So if a project doesn't have the budget for the big, big solution, try to see if you, can fold this, if you can break it down in small bricks, like really small products which can get them on the way so they can understand about what is gamification. Maybe later they will be ready for, that, for the big changes. And of course, stakeholder management. And um, what I uh, find the most effective way of stakeholder management in this case is find the cowboys in your organization. Find these business managers who are willing to make a change and support them as much as they can because they will do the whole talking for you. You just have to provide them with the knowledge. And per currently we're at the stage of really thinking about how can we position gamification. So with every big organization, all new things start at the outside, like the, the HR process, the communication processes, the marketing processes, and now you have to bring it into the core. So really start out with gamification at the front of your business chain. I uh, myself started out with it uh, within IT, but I realized that once you get to an IT project, things are already decided by the business. So you really have to make sure that there where the decisions about budgets, about scope and everything are being made, that's where you have to influence people with gamification. Um, and then there's a the point that you have to step back and start coaching people and don't be Mr. Gamification because in the end it shouldn't rely on you as a person yourself but rely on a lot of persons who are willing to learn and evolve in gamification. So, for example, last year I spent 100% of my hours on gamification. This year is 50% and probably next year will be even less because I 
brought out this model that other people are doing it in their normal daily work. And it shouldn't be a separate project or a separate department for long. 80% of what's necessary for good gamification is already there within your organization. So don't try to set up new departments. Just make sure that it is implemented there where it should be. So I have three showcases to show what we did with gamification. Um, the first is about our mortgage process. And uh, well, people who have bought a house know about the problems with the mortgage process. You don't want a mortgage, you want a house. And the mortgage is the, the nasty thing which is standing in your way. And what does a mortgage mean? That means that you have to provide different kind of documents. It means you have to provide different kind of information. You have to read through all this difficult uh, material. And our question was, all right, we want to make sure that our customers are going to do this online because it's much more efficient if they provide us all the information online. So how can we make this engaging? So we built up a system which actually makes it now fun and engaging to prepare for your mortgage consultation, which is something which is, well, a few years ago, I wouldn't have believed it. And for that, we, we listen to our customers like, what are your questions? One of the thing is, what is a mortgage? What's in there? Um, what do I need to do? When I get there uh, and I'm in a conversation with someone, with a financial advisor, he probably, he can tell me everything because I don't know about it. So we build an online environment where we broke the whole mortgage down in small, little, bite-sized levels. And they provided us with a little information or some documents about the situation, and we provided them with feedback. All right, this is the amount of money we think you can loan. Well, based on this information, I think that um, uh, you're asking for too much or too little. So with every step, they get a more, better, a, a clearer view, a view on what they can loan, what the perspective is on uh, getting a mortgage. And we found out that using this model, instead of just having them, bring it, having them to bring the documents to the local branches, worked way better. Because it wasn't just that people were uh, providing us the information in time, it was also that they knew what a mortgage is about. Um, well, there were different um, systems implemented to just make sure that they keep them going, to keep them, well, to, to get that sense of productivity by providing the, well, the, the, the the necessary feedback signals like the, the, the little levels and the indicators. And, um, well, speaking of rewards, uh, when a customer used this mortgage file instead of the normal process uh, in, in preparation, preparation of his consultation, we gave him a 450 dollar uh, euro, excuse me, 450 euro discount, which is a one-time reward which works because people don't get this every week, of course, they don't <laughs> get a mortgage every week, well, the, the, the normal customer doesn't. So we could provide them with that reward. What was interesting is that the amount of consultations grew uh, in a housing market, which is really bad. Um, the amount of consultation through this uh, online channel was really growing. It's now 30% of the overall consultations. But what's most uh, interesting is that normally a customer came to that desk, sat there with a financial advisor and just hear what the advisor had to say and then left. And now there are customers sitting there asking, asking the advisor questions because they know about mortgages and there is a more of an interaction and discussion going. We brought up another problem because now our advisors, they're not used to the new role because now they get critical questions from the customers. Um, so for that, we are also uh, using gamification. And now we, we are building an app in which people, uh, the, the financial advisors learn about their new role um, they're engaged to uh, every month do uh, little assignments to know what has changed in that mortgage process to make sure that they're on top of their game. And we also use gamification for that because one of the cowboys, which is behind this whole process, is now very enthusiastic about it. Second showcase is about a, um, a more internal um, application of gamification. Uh, we call the CRM challenge. Um, what we found out is that one of our local branches, um, it took over five days before a customer got, um, got a response on a phone call, which is really long. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible. So we looked at gamification to see if, can we reduce that response time on customer calls? And what we did, um, we built a dashboard in which teams competed, and we asked them, all you need to do is improve your situation, or improve your, um, your results, and that's the response time, every week. So every week that you're, you have performed better than the last week, you get points from us. 
So they started competing with each other in a team based, and they were supported by lean consultants in uh, continuous improvement management and, um, and operational steering. And what happened that after a few weeks, these response times started to drop. And first, it was, of course, about the rewards, and the rewards weren't very, uh, very big. It was just getting uh, a moment of intention from the management on, on Monday morning. There was a big, uh, it was a big moment where the winner, the weekly winner, was announced, and the management was there and gave them the attention they wanted, of course. But it was also the fact that they found a way as a team to improve, and they got daily feedback on these improvements. And in the end, uh, the, the, the throughput time on these service requests was increased by 50%. And there was a high adaptation of these lean continu continuous improvement methods. Um, we're repeating this uh, at another department, uh, at our IT department. And we want to reduce the amount of times that uh, customer calls being reassigned between different teams. Uh, it's running as we speak. This morning, I looked into the results. And this week's score was 17%. As the whole department of 250 um, employees improved their sell themselves by 17% um, over the last week. My third showcase is, uh, I think, the most interesting because uh, what I always find um, a bit, uh, how do I call it? What I always find is that we, sh we see a lot of showcases on, on gamification. We see it here on the G Summit. I just, I just showed you two. And all you see are showcases and some percentages, of course, but there is always a lack of data. There are n there's not a lot of empirical research on gamification. So I asked um, the Eindhoven University in the Netherlands, can you help me with finding empirical proof for gamification within our, comp in our context? Um, we built a prototype, and uh, the prototype was um, um, used, it was uh, all built around saving. And of course, most of the people don't, don't find their financial situation and financial education very, very interesting. So we asked ourselves, can we in get people more engaged with the whole saving process? So we built this prototype. And in this prototype, we tried to implement a player journey. And those who have seen the talks of Amy Jo Kim know about the player journey. It's about really finding the right balance between how you, how you challenge people based on their abilities. And we broke down all the behavior which is necessary for a good, um, for, for good saving behavior, we broke them down in little missions. And it started out very simple, by just getting insight in your financial situation, just checking your, your transactions every day, and it built up to uh, setting up saving goals, setting up budgets, and staying within these budgets, and, and so on and so on. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> and we implemented that, um, that, product, that player journey in a prototype. And the first question that our customers asked us, what do I need to do to develop the correct savings habits? Well, we gave them a sort of a mission structure. So based on these levels in the player journey, they got small challenges. And these challenges were being performed real time where they were they're, they're doing their banking, um, uh, the banking business. And every time when they completed it, that, that progress bar uh, filled up. And it was just, and that progress bar showed them, how, am I on the right track? But it wasn't just about filling the progress bar. At one point, they have to keep up with that financial routine. So when they drop the routine, so say, for instance, uh, they didn't check on their transactions for a week, that progress bar started to empty again. So it was a good indicator on our, uh, for am I still on track? And also, uh, we have different kind of customers which did need different levels of guidance from the bank. So some customers were able to grow in their level so at one point, you get the insight in your finances. It started uh, growing and steering and getting real grip. Well, this, um, as I said before, we wanted to get empirical proof like, uh, which could show us, does gamification really make financing more engaging? So we used this prototype. We had a group which used this prototype. And we had a control group who didn't use any prototype, but was measured in the same way. And we found out that engagement on the player journey group was significantly higher. So that's good news. We also found something very interesting is that um, we measured the level of expertise of our customers, so expertise with their finances. And we found out that people with low expertise appreciated that gamification, the gamified prototype way higher than the people with high expertise. And there was even an interaction effect, which means that when your expertise is very high, 
you actually appreciated the gamification lower. So this gives us very proper direction for design because now we know that the amount of expertise determines how much gamification we can use for our, our uh, customers. And it also shows us that, um, which is, um, uh, sounds very logical, that the ad net adaptive nature of that player journey is of vital importance. And you could say, of course, right, is that very interesting? Well, for us it is, because we usually build apps or systems which are based on all the different, all the, the, the possibilities are there. So you don't just grow yourself into a, si a system or a process, you just get everything and you have to figure it out yourself. And this is a way which uh, we found out that we can really make financing interesting for people on a very in a very subtle way, using very subtle gamification elements. Um, so those are just three showcases, and we've got a lot more. We did some game-based uh, management consulting. Um, we used Drillster as a as a educational tool. We have uh, built an app which uh, helps our customers to uh, helps our um, uh, how do you call it the the, the um, the restaurants which are our customer uh, to build our own loyalty system for their customers. Um, we've used uh, built games to implement new rules and regulations. Um, we have built a game of a, a game fight app for children to learn about earning money, saving money, uh, saving money, uh, setting budgets for themselves. So they're all different kind of projects where we're learning from in that gamification app. Um, what I wanted to conclude my talk with is. Um, I found two different articles, and, and those are a few of many, is stating that banks sometimes tend to lag behind on gamification. And, um, well, I can understand where they're coming from, because there are not a lot of examples of banking uh, and, and gamification which are so visible. Um, as you can see, my showcase, they weren't, they weren't very shiny, there weren't any badges, there weren't any points. Um, but do we really lag behind on gamification? Um, is it really so that if you don't have these elements, that you're not gamifying. Well, let's, let me tell, tell you a bit, little bit about banks and banks in the last few years. Uh, this is one of our local branches, or it's, it's still there. And this is how banks were considered uh, in the early days. Like, we were respected, we were trustworthy, we were a very respectful member of society. But then something happened. Um, credit crisis. And all things started to happen. Banks started to fall over. Uh, it turned out that banks weren't so very trustworthy and respectful. There were um, big bonuses. There were scandals. Uh, even Rabank wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, very good in it. And um, suddenly the whole position of a bank and society changed. And nowadays we're these, these bastards. We're the big buildings where people are sitting just to earn a lot of money. Not really, it's not really about the customers anymore. It's just about their own bonuses. And what does that mean? That means that there's a lot of criticism about how we are offering our service to customers. And banks should stick to the basic, basics. And banks just should stick to my savings account. And um, gamification is in its current form is often considered a waste of money. Because, well, banks, you sort of need to quiet it down. So what does, the, what does that mean? That means that people are a bit reluctant to play with us. And um, for those who don't know, um, the magic circle, which is a concept explaining why people are sometimes willing to play. Uh, it's very simple. Um, when you play a game, you agree to certain rules which are apparent in that game. And then you sort of step into the magic, magic, magic circle. And um, it's a little space within that world where we live in, and there we agree to play. And bad reliability of banks and lack of trust and, and, and disrespect really affect the willingness to step into that magic circle and the willingness to play. So, in my opinion, current gamification, which mostly based on, on the points and the badge and lead, leaderboards, is too explicit. Explicit. So, excuse me, too explicit. And it's really based within the magic circle. And I believe that real gamification is not a full-on game. It should be on that border of that magic circle between the real world and the play world. So um, that asks for different manifestations of gamification. And then you see different ways on how banking you deal with it. So we all know BBVA Bank, which uses the points, badge, and leaderboards. And I don't, um, I don't have any opinion on how they do it. I think it was a very successful showcase. 
but it is one of the few showcases where you can really use these elements for banks. As you can see, we have our own successful gamification, but we don't use the shiny elements. Because gamification shouldn't be about these three. It should not be about points, badges, and leaderboards. Instead of these, these very visible motivators, we, we, we need to use these, these hidden motivators. It's about motivational design, and it's about gamification mechanics. The design process instead of the design elements. And I really believe that the real power of gamification is in these hidden motivators, and not just in what you see. And of course, gamification can apply for, for banks in increasing employee engagement, of course, in adoption of behavior change programs, in supporting customers in our numerous complex procedures and products, um, in engaging customers with a very controlled and healthy financial lifestyle. But we really need to be, move beyond where gamification is now, in my opinion. We need to move beyond that, that sticking to these, these very few elements. Um, when I Googled for gamification years ago, uh, and uh, when I was making the presentation, I Googled for, for pictures, I saw this one. And um, I think it still applies, because I think gamification is our method to interact with the, with the constructs of the human mind. And to really succeed in gamification, we as banks need gamification designers with an open mind. And, um, and not just based on these elements. So. That was my presentation, and if any questions, feel free to ask them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it, uh, the question was if I can know and control about all the different gamification projects within the hub. Um, yes. Um, do I control it? No. Um, I believe that people need to sell these ideas to their own business line, and uh, they ask the questions about, right, is this profitable? Is this good? Uh, does this help us in our business? What I do control is, is that do they, um, are they sure that it's the right method to use? So I'm really keen on... Um, people who say, right, we use gamification just to make it fun, but they can't really explain why they're using it. That's, those are the projects where I really, uh, I'm really sharp on, because I think they, those can damage gamification as, as it is. Um, but it wouldn't work if I want to control everything, because I really want to make that viral uh, social mechan uh, me uh, mechanic. So. No, yeah, I'm well involved. Uh, some I know of, some I'm involved in, some I'm, I'm really designing in. So it def depends a bit on the difference. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the thing was trust us, of course, with our customers, which uh, um, well, they don't trust us as a bank in some cases. Um, what is really important is, is make it meaningful. So make sure that you can show them and explain to them that this is helping them. And um, sometimes when we share prototypes with, with customers, they respond to us like, right, nice that you're building this kind of app or something, but last time I was on your local branch, I was really, I was helped and I wasn't helped very much or, or, you, or you didn't do the right thing for me. That is the core where you need to start. So when I found out that gamification is sort of rubbing the edge, but it's not really about the core what a customer wants, then that's not the way to do it. So you, you don't have to be afraid not to use gamification. The customer server comes to one. I believe that gamification is a good way to do it, but uh, I'm not afraid to step back if I see, all oh, right, this is not the right way to earn the trust of our customers. So, so it's not just gamification is the method in here. It's, it's, it's a mean to... to help the customer, but first and foremost, that what you want to help the customer with has to be meaningful. Yes? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, um, the, most of the things where I see that is that when it comes to privacy, and uh, mostly when, with our own employees, and well, so far I haven't really uh, 
found any uh, difficulties yet because you have to follow the same rules with, with every kind of method. So gamification, it's, it's, it is a, me a methodology and um, no, I haven't really found every, any difficulties yet. I, but I think... I th I, 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 yeah, yeah, and I, I discussed, it, discussed it with our ethics board and everything, but I think that um, the government is sort of, well, sort of lagging behind. They don't know really yet about its potential or maybe its danger, so they're sort of dealing with their own regulation now, but I think it will come at some point. Yeah. The biggest challenge is to make sure that it is not something which will stand on its own, but it's really integrated in the current um, business lines or projects or programs. So at this point, we are undergoing a huge budget cut throughout the whole organization, and you really have to make sure that it, is, it's, it stands because it's adding value and it's not just a, a new novelty or something odd. That's my biggest challenge. Okay. Thank you for your attention.